Good morning. morning. Welcome to worship on Palm Sunday. Today we celebrate uh, Jesus' triumphal entry into Jerusalem. So it is a good day and the beginning of our Holy Week. We're grateful that we get to share this with all of you who are worshiping with us online. We're grateful that you're participating in community with us and we pray that you're well. As part of our celebration, we get to sing the hymn, All Glory, Laud, and Honor. I think it's been sung since time immemorial. Uh, it was written in the 800s by Bishop Theodolf of Orleans. I apologize to any of you who speak French. That is not my second or third language. Uh, he is said to have written it from his prison tower after he was thrown there by King Louis the Debonair, son of Charlemagne. And the story goes that in the year 821, as King Louis, who was also an emperor himself by that time, passed by the prison on his way to Palm Sunday Mass, and as he did, Bishop Theodolf sang his song loudly from the tower. And the emperor was so taken with the song that he released the bishop from prison. It's a good story, right? Nice way to start the week. Uh, I invite you to stand as we read our entrance gospel for today. The Holy Gospel according to Mark. When they were approaching Jerusalem at Bethphage and Bethany near the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two of his disciples and said to them, go into the village ahead of you, and immediately as you enter it, you will find tied there a colt that has never been ridden. Untie it and bring it. If anyone says to you, why are you doing this? Just say this, the Lord needs it and will send it back here immediately. They went away and found a colt tied near a door outside in the street. As they were untying it, some of the bystanders said to them, what are you doing untying the colt? They told them what Jesus had said and they allowed them to take it. Then they brought the colt to Jesus and threw their cloaks on it and he sat on it. Many people spread their cloaks on the road and others spread leafy branches that they had cut in the fields. Then those who went ahead and those who followed were shouting, Hosanna, blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the coming kingdom of our ancestor David. Hosanna in the highest heaven. Then Jesus entered Jerusalem and went into the temple. And when he had looked around at everything, as it was already late, he went out to Bethany with the 12. The gospel of the Lord. Praise May God be with you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. We praise and thank you, Holy One, for your redemption of the world through your Son, Jesus. On this day, we remember his entrance to the holy city of Jerusalem with shouts of praise and cries for salvation. On this day, we ask that you bless us, your servants, as we worship you. May our hearts be filled with the joy of this day as we shout. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Bless us today, O God, as you blessed the world long ago. In the name of Jesus, our Messiah, we pray. Amen.
Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who writes the law on our hearts, who draws all people together through Jesus. Amen. Amen. Held in God's mercy, let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Holy God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We hoard resources while our neighbors are hungry and cold. We speak in ways that silence others. We are silent when we should speak up. We keep score in our hearts. We let hurts grow into hatred. Forgive us for all these things and for the sins that only you know. Amen. Out of love for the whole world, God draws near to us, breaks every snare of sin, washes away our wrongs, and restores the promise of life through Jesus Christ. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray together. Everlasting God, you have established your rule in the human heart through the servanthood of Jesus Christ. By your spirit, keep us in the joyful procession of those who with their tongues confess Jesus as Lord and with their lives praise him as Savior, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. The Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, o Lord. While Jesus was in Bethany at the house of Simon the leper, as he sat at the table, a woman came in with an alabaster jar of very costly ointment of nard, and she broke open the jar and poured the ointment on his head. But some were there who said to one another in anger, why was the ointment wasted in this way? For this ointment could have been sold for more than 300 denarii and the money given to the poor and they scolded her. But Jesus said, let her alone. Why do you trouble her? She has performed a good service for me, for you always have the poor with you, and you can show kindness to them whenever you wish, but you will not always have me. She has done what she could. She has anointed my body beforehand for its burial. Truly, I tell you, wherever the good news is proclaimed in the whole world, what she has done 
will be told in remembrance of her. The Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. Grace to you and peace from God, our Creator, and from our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. We've spent the last few Sundays learning about the heated conversations that the religious leaders had with Jesus as they questioned his authority on Monday and Tuesday of Holy Week. And they set the stage for what will happen on Monday, Thursday, and Good Friday. But today we back up a little bit so that we have the reading of Jesus' triumphal entry on Palm Sunday, which happened before all those conversations. And in the event in the reading that we just heard jumps forward, and it happens after those conversations. And after Jesus is anointed here, Judas goes to the chief priest to betray him. Uh, so our two readings today bookend Sunday through Tuesday night, give or take, of Holy Week. And all of the readings together, the celebration and the contention, give us a window into what was going on in Mark's community as they first heard this gospel. It was written in about the year 70. And at that time, the Christian community was in crisis. They weren't sure if they should stick together and hold on to their faith, or if they should try to align themselves more with Rome in order to survive. They genuinely didn't know what to do. And Mark's answer to their situation was his account of Jesus' life. And through it, he encouraged Christians to find a leader that would resist the Roman Empire, someone who would both be consistent with the old Jewish practices and represent a way forward that included power through the horror of the cross and all the tensions created when we see a king who is crucified. In this gospel, Mark reminds us that in Jesus, we get a leader, a king, that we don't expect. Because in Jesus, we get the king we need. And where that really starts to become clear is on the first Palm Sunday. Because when Jesus rode into town, that whole scene mocked and ridiculed the typical military parades of that time. It made fun of the Roman government. The Mount of Olives was the location from which people expected the final battle for Jerusalem's liberation to begin. And that is where Jesus began his quote unquote final campaign. But the supplies he used weren't weapons of war, but simply a colt, not even a full grown donkey. The people greeted him like they would any other victorious military leader. But Jesus was unarmed, riding an animal that was probably too small for him to be on in a parade that was meant to expose the pretentiousness of the powers that be. And the people recognized that and they loved it. Unlike other powers that had conquered Jerusalem in the past, Jesus forged a new path, a new way to change the world. He came as someone who humbly rejected domination and who identified with the poor. He was vulnerable and refused to rely on violence to get his way. He embodied a different understanding of power and invited the people to see and live in the world in a new way. Everyone who cheered for Jesus that day was right there with him until they realized that he meant it, until they figured out that that's who he really was, that he wasn't the kind of ruler that they wanted or expected because he was God's type of king. Then they weren't quite as on board with everything. Their change in attitude started to become clear on the night that Jesus was anointed in Simon's home. In a matter of days, Jesus went from being celebrated and acclaimed to being mocked and humiliated. And by the end of the week, he was dead. Looking back on the events of that day from our perspective, it's easy for us to see the differences between the people's expectations and hopes for Jesus in contrast to who he actually was. And it's easy for us to think, oh, we aren't like them. We get it. We know who Jesus was. 
But in reality, our expectations aren't always that different from what theirs were. Yes, we talk about Jesus' humility and the characteristics that he embodied and asks us to live into. And we do strive to live according to his way. But we often put limits on it. For example, we only do it for certain people, or when it's convenient, or when it's easy. But Jesus is God's type of king, and that knows no boundaries. As Christians, when we tell the story of who Jesus is for us, we don't normally tell it from the perspective of an event like Palm Sunday. We usually tell it from the perspective of the resurrection, another celebration. It's difficult for us to tell it any other way because without the resurrection, our faith is incomplete. But if we don't take seriously events like Palm Sunday and also the cross and what they mean for our lives, then our faith is still incomplete. And Easter Sunday is nothing more than an excuse to have another party. Because when we consider that Palm Sunday exposes the suffering and all that is wrong in the world, and that we believe the cross of Jesus represents the suffering of all human beings, and it's the burden that Jesus identified with and took upon himself, when we consider all of that, as Christians, we recognize that we're called to go to the cross to stand in solidarity with all who suffer for any reason. Last fall, we learned that in solidarity with the suffering in Gaza due to the war between Israel and Palestine, the main churches in Jordan, Jerusalem, and Bethlehem agreed to cancel all public Christmas celebrations. The same announcement has not been made for Easter. But leading up to Easter, the Via Dolorosa, the Stations of the Cross in Jerusalem, is normally packed with tourists. But this year, it's nearly empty because of the war. And so again, in solidarity, there are pilgrims all over the world walking their own Via Dolorosa and praying for peace, not only between Israel and Palestine, but for the whole world. The Church of Scotland recently published prayers for people to pray when, wherever they walk this walk. And as part of those resources, the Right Reverend Sally Foster Fulton, who is the moderator of the General Assembly of the Church of Scotland, wrote the following. If you pray, pray from your guts, not your lips. Offer a prayer that moves in you and through you one that calls you to reach out to a fearful neighbor, to speak up for peace and calm and the unity of humanity. Wherever you are, check in on your Jewish neighbors, friends, and colleagues. Wherever you are, check in on your neighbors, friends, and colleagues who have family in Gaza. Wherever you are, be mindful of your words. Be kind to one another wherever you find each other. We are one global family. When we stand at the cross in solidarity with people who are suffering, we don't just stand there to offer thoughts and prayers and then walk away. When we stand at the cross in solidarity with people who are suffering, we remember whose type of king Jesus is and enter into their suffering with them. We meet them wherever they are, and we accompany them. We walk with them when they experience hatred or violence and speak out against those things to keep them from happening to someone else. When people are suffering, we accompany them through every kind of life situation. We become experts on the cause of their suffering and advocate for them when needed seeing them through to the end, whatever that may be and for however long it takes. When we remember that Jesus is God's type of king, it changes us. It frees us from our expectations of him and gives us the courage to live into love and compassion and mercy and grace and forgiveness all the time, not just when we're around certain people or when it's convenient. It carries us through what happens on the days following Palm Sunday, 
sustaining us through the events of Maundy Thursday and Good Friday, holding us as we wait on Holy Saturday, showing us that the day of resurrection isn't just another reason to have a party, but rather a true celebration of who Jesus really is. Because the Jesus we celebrate today and every day is God's type of king. He is the king we need him to be. Thanks be to God. Amen. Trusting in God's baptismal promises, we affirm our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again, he ascended into heaven, he is seated at the right hand of the Father, he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Trusting in God's promise to reconcile all things, let us pray for the church, the well-being of creation, and a world in need. Holy God, in Jesus you came among us as a humble servant. Give your church throughout the world the grace to embody that humility as it seeks to serve with your love and compassion. Merciful God, Hear our prayer. in creation, life springs from death. Redeem your creation awaiting resurrection. Restore lost habitats and endangered species and nurture new growth. Grant relief to areas affected by severe weather, especially in Iowa, Ohio, Indiana, Missouri, and Illinois. Merciful God, hear our prayer. In all nations, guide those who are in power that they would not exploit their position but instead seek your justice. Protect all who live in areas of war or violent conflict. We pray especially for the people of Haiti, South Sudan, Myanmar, Russia and Ukraine, 
and Israel and Palestine. May your peace prevail over all the world. Merciful God. <coughs> you abide with all who are experiencing loss, disconnection, or brokenness. Grant respite and renewal to all who are in need of healing, especially Bill, Marlis, Andy, Marge, Tom, Julie, Lois, Marley, Blenda, Leslie, Philip, Amy, Greta, Jackie, Dwayne, Ralph, Linda, Alexandra, Beverly, Misty, all caregivers and all we lift up before you now. For whom and for what would you pray today? Merciful God, hear our prayer. You call us to share your love by serving others. Bless our partnership with Lantern Hill that we may continue to support their mission of education and breaking the cycle of poverty in their part of the world. Merciful God, hear our prayer. We praise you for the faith that you have given to people in all times and places. Give us also such faith, faith to trust the promises of baptism until we are united around your table with all who now rest in you. Merciful God, hear our prayer. Accompany us on our journey, God of grace, and receive the prayers of our hearts through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. May the peace of Christ be with you always. Thank you. Please share God's peace with one another. Peace to you who are worshiping with us online. For communion today, we will receive at two stations in the front of the altar uh, continuously. Please follow the usher's instructions as you come forward. You guys know all this, but I got to say it anyway. Uh, please let them know if you need to receive communion in your seat, and we will bring it to you. And we have a gluten-free option available as well, so please let us know if you need that. Uh, the Holy Week schedule is on page 12 in your worship bulletin. It's also on the website, and we will uh, update our social media pages throughout the week so that that schedule is current. It's not going to change, but we'll just keep it up to date. Um, as we continue with our musical offering and the choir anthem, we also take this opportunity to reflect on and give thanks to God for the blessings in our lives. Thank you. 
We pray together. Jesus, you are the bread of life and the host of this meal. Bless these gifts that we have gathered, that all people may know your goodness. Feed us not only with this holy food, but with hunger for justice and peace. We pray this in your name. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ. You call your people to cleanse their hearts and prepare with joy for the Paschal Feast, that renewed in the gift of baptism, we may come to the fullness of your grace. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. On the night that Jesus was betrayed, he took bread, blessed and broke it and shared it with his friends, saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. We pray together the prayer Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. This meal is the gift of God for the people of God. All are invited and all are welcome to receive this gift of grace. Please be seated as I commune our people who are worshiping online. Thank you. This is the blood of Christ shed for you.
As you are able, please stand. <clears throat> Let us pray together. Generous God, at this table we have tasted your immeasurable grace. As grains of wheat are gathered into one bread, now make us loaf to feed the world. In the name of Jesus, the bread of life. Amen. Receive the blessing. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.
I invite all the children present and youth to come and join me for the sending. <laughs> 